Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Hindu Wellness Series. Today's webinar on non-surgical treatment for fibroids is presented by Mayot International. We have with us Dr. Karthikeyan Damodaran, Director, Vascular and Interventional Radiology, Mayot Hospital. He will be speaking on a minimally invasive procedure for treating uterine fibroids in detail. Dr. Karthikeyan Damodaran is a vascular and interventional radiologist with over 15 years of specialist experience. He has trained at renowned institutions across the US and the UK and has worked as a senior consultant, clinical lead in Singapore. He is a member of international radiology societies in the US, UK, Europe, Singapore, and India. His expertise include lower limb arterial and venous angioplasty, stenting and thrombolysis, dialysis, fistula angioplasty, stenting and thrombolysis, laser ablation for varicose veins, liver and renal cancer radiofrequency, uterine fibroid embolization, prostate artery embolization, and endovascular aortic stent graft repair for aortic aneurysm. Dr. Kartikian has published more than 30 articles in internationally acclaimed peer-reviewed medical journals. We welcome you, sir. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, is my screen fully visible? Uh, no, sir. Okay, is it yeah, now? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. yes, sir. Good morning and a warm welcome to all the viewers who have logged in for this uh, webinar on a revolutionary uh, pinhole treatment for fibroids without surgery. Uh, just as Serena was telling you, I'm an interventional radiologist working as the director of interventional radiology at Miot International Hospital. So before we dive into our uh, presentation, you guys would all be wondering what is interventional radiology? What does this guy do? So just a brief introduction to what is interventional radiology and what is it we do. So to simply explain, interventional radiology is a highly specialized field of modern medicine, which is rapidly expanding, where we use pinhole access into the body to treat various conditions in different parts of the body without opening up the body or without surgery or anesthesia. Now, in case you're wondering how is this possible, we all know that when we do scans like ultrasound, CT, or X-rays, we can find out what's going on inside the body without opening the body. Using the same technology, we can see inside the body and we guide our catheters or needles into the body and we can treat conditions, various conditions in different parts of the body without opening the body and without surgery. So, the major advantage of this treatment specialty is that there is no major surgery, no need to open up the body. So it's all minimally invasive. And in fact, to say ultra minimally invasive procedures. So the recovery period is much shorter. So as you can see on the screen on the right hand side, there is a picture of all the blood vessels in the body. So normally what we do is we gain access, a pinhole access into the blood vessel at the top of your leg. And you can see all the blood vessels of the body are interlinked or connected. So from that point, we can get access into blood vessel of any organ of your body, right from the head to foot. So we can offer different treatments for different parts of the body without opening your body and provide treatment, complete treatment, which is results, has results similar to open surgery, but without the side effects of surgery. And here's a picture on the bottom of the screen where we see a needle, the white line is the needle. And this is being introduced into the lung, into a small lump in the lung which is a tumor. And this is done directly under CT guidance. We insert the needle just through a pinhole axis again to either take biopsy where we take samples from the lump to find out whether it's cancer without opening the body or to even deliver treatments where we, this needle can be a, a needle which has producing heat at the tip called radio frequency needle, which can heat the nodule and kill the nodule without opening the body. Isn't that great? So what it means to the patients, it really means that patients have a very 
easy procedure, very simple procedure without all the complications which we know of major surgery anesthesia. And what it really means is they can really recover very fast and get back to the normalcy as very fast as they can. Okay. So one of the treatments, one of such treatments we provide is called uterine artery embolization, which is what we're going to talk about today. Okay. Just before we talk about the treatment itself, let's look at what fibroids are. So uterine fibroids are lumps that grow on the uterus. As you can see on the picture here, they can grow. Uh, this is the uterus, you can see, and then you can see multiple whitish pink lumps in the, shown in the picture. These are the fibroids which happen in the body. And these fibroids can either happen in the outer wall of the uterus, or they can happen in the inner wall of the uterus, or in the center of the uterine wall. And these are called fibroids. And basically, first thing to tell, these fibroids are not cancer. These are just lumps which happen due to overgrowth of normal uterine tissue, and they tend to slowly grow in time. And the main reason why they occur is they, it's not due to the imbalance of the female hormones, which gets secreted naturally. But when there is an imbalance of it, they tend tissues tend to overgrow and form these lumps. And also they attribute it to some genetic factors, meaning if the if a mother has it, then the daughter or her related cousins or sisters can also have this problem. Okay, so how common is this problem, fibroids? So fibroids actually a very common problem in young women and statistics show that 37% of Indian women in the age group between 20 and 40 years and 57% of women in the age group between 40 and 59 years have fibroids, which is a staggering number actually, which really, almost equates to like almost one in two women between 40 to 60 years have a fibroid. But the good thing about it is not everyone suffers from symptoms due to fibroid, okay? Some, but a fair majority of them do have problems due to fibroid. And let's look at what the problems are. So here is a pictorial uh, showing what the symptoms of fibroids uh, are. And we can basically divide them into two components. One is uh, fibroids can affect directly affect their physical health, which we'll be looking into a bit detail, and also can also cause emotional stress or mental health problems. So let's dive in. So the first number one complaint patients come to us when they have fibroids is disturbance in their periods. They can have very heavy periods, which means they have very heavy flow, or they get passing clots, or their period cycle or the periods are lasting much longer than usual. As a normal expected range of the period to last is for three to five days. But for some women, it can go on up to 10 to 15 days, which is quite a lot of time. Or they can have very painful periods. Normally, generally women have some discomfort in the abdomen before their period or during the period. But the pain that happens when they have a fibroid is quite bad that they're not able to even do the normal activity. Sometimes they end up taking leave from work. A lot of my patients tell that I end up taking leave on my second day or third day because I can't bother to get out of bed. So it can be very bad pain. They have to take painkillers and they stay curled up in bed. And that's what they exactly tell me. The pain can be in the lower abdomen, can be in the lower back, or sometimes they say pain is a dragging pain in the legs. And some of our patient, women do sort of uh, neglect these heavy periods. And what happens is over time, they tend to lose a lot of blood over time. And what happens is become, they become very anemic as in the hemoglobin level in the blood drops significantly almost to half the normal levels. And then they start feeling very tired. They are not able to do their normal activities. They're getting very breathless when they walk up the stairs or they feel tired and sleepy all the time, doesn't have the initiative to do their normal duties. And, and uh, that can be a common problem as well, anemia. And then next we have symptoms, what we call as pressure symptoms. What it means by pressure symptoms is some patients don't have problem with their periods, but these fibroids are sitting in there and slowly growing over time. And they can get quite big up to even 10 to 15 centimeters in size. The biggest fibroid we treated is almost a lady who had a fibroid, which is like almost 18 centimeters in size, which is growing above the level of her umbilicus. And she had a big bulge in her lower abdomen and she was almost looking like four months pregnant. So that's what can happen. Some of the women put up these symptoms without you no, know, looking into their healthcare. And so because of this, they can have pressure symptoms. What it means with pressure symptoms is they can have feeling a sensation of bloating all the time, or they can feel a low backache because that fibroid is pressing on the back, lower back, and they have a lot of low backache. Sometimes they don't realize it's due to the fibroids. When they come to us for 
uh, consultation when we ask them, do you have low backache? And they say, actually, doctor, yes, I've been suffering from this for a long time, but I thought it was just me. And they don't seem to link up the causes. So they can have that. Or when the fibroid is pressing on their uh, urinary bladder, which is in front of their uterus, they can have a problem called urinary urgency, which means that the moment they get the sensation, they have to pass urine, they have to rush to the toilet. They can't hold it for long. Or they end up going to the uh, washroom quite frequently as in others because there's a constant pressure on the bladder. So the capacity of the bladder is very less and it's also irritated. And secondly, they can have a problem called constipation because again, the uterus can press on the, uh, the bowel, which is behind the uterus. And the pelvis is a very, very small space. So the moment the uterus starts growing big, it starts pressing on all the other structures next to it. As I said, the bladder, or you can press on your bowel. So they can have constipation or they can feel very gassy and bloated. And some of the patients say that they just felt it's just them and it's, uh, they couldn't really link it up to the fibroids. And one other common thing which can happen in younger women who are trying to conceive is when the fibroids are too huge, they occupy most of the space within the womb. So they have difficulty in conceiving a baby. So it can be a cause of infertility too. And uh, lastly, I also mentioned about the emotional component. Now you can see after, after having told you about all the uh, physical uh, components I told you, that can directly lead to that's enough to cause enough emotional stress for these patients because, um, you know, one, they're having a prolonged period and uh, they're having heavy pain and they're having difficulty conceiving and all these can directly lead to emotional stress and mental stress and they're not able to do their normal activities. We had a patient who came to us. She's a 42-year-old woman who's a teacher working in a, a very uh, renowned Orthodox school in Chennai. And she's been having this problem with fibroids. She had a fibroid which is almost 10 centimeters in size. And she's been putting up with it for nearly five years. And her problem was heavy periods, uh, which means a lot of flow, as well as the period lasts for nearly 15 days. I couldn't believe. And she told me, yeah, she said, yes, doctor, it lasts for 15 days. That's almost half the month. And then the periods finishes and 10 days again, she starts her periods. So you can see she was, when she, because she had heavy flow during the periods, she tried slowly avoided going out when she had periods, as in going to social events or attending, uh, going to public places or even traveling in the public transport because she found it like she may have an embarrassing moment. So she tried avoiding these things and soon she was finding herself, restricting herself to a home all the time. And she found it very difficult at work because she became very anemic and she found that she couldn't climb a flight of stairs without getting breathless. And uh, all these were, all these, physical problems and this emotional isolation was also putting a lot of stress on her mind. And even at work, she found that because she's been having the periods for a long time and it's a cultural stigma in the Indian culture, people were avoiding her and they wouldn't sit down to have lunch with her or share her food with her. She was going to have extreme amounts of emotional stress due to this problem. And we found that her physical symptoms are much more, but she felt her emotional stress was much more compared to the period problems she was having. So that's the amount of uh, you know, disturbances in their physical and mental health women go through when they have fibroids. Now, what are the treatment options when it comes to fibroids? When they go to most physicians or gynecologists, when they go for the, uh, when they have fibroids, most of them, when they come with these heavy periods, they will have an ultrasound scan of the pelvis, which will easily detect they have fibroids. And the next treatment they offered is only major surgery where they do a surgery to remove the entire uterus out of the body, which means it's a big scar in the abdomen to remove the entire uterus and it's a big surgery. Or in some patients, they may choose to do a surgery where we will just remove the fibroids from the uterus. So needless to say, both are open surgeries, which will require general anesthesia and they have lots of post-op pain. They end up staying in hospital for up to a week. And then the most important thing for young women is they have the, for them to get back to their normal activity, to the initial state where they were, it almost takes one to two months, which is simply not acceptable to women at this day and age where they're working, taking care of the family, having a nuclear family. They find it very difficult to have support system to uh, you know, go through this surgery. And because of, just because of this reason, we find a lot of women who come to us have been postponing the surgery. They have been told by many doctors, they go from doctor to doctor looking for any other treatment option but they're all told surgery. So they just keep putting, pushing off the surgery and just putting up with these problems for a long time just because they don't want to go for surgery. And uh, other treatment is hormone tablets sometimes give us temporary relief from their periods, but the moment the tablets are stopped, all the problems come back to them. 
And also, as I said, these hormone tablets again can cause problems because fibroids happen in the first place due to hormonal imbalance. And we're trying to use hormones to treat this problem as well, which doesn't make sense. So these are the current treatments that are generally offered for uh, fibroids. And they are not acceptable to all our patients because that's what we see when patients come to a clinic. They are not happy with having a hysterectomy done. They, some women also feel very strongly that they identify the uterus as part of the femininity and they just don't want to lose it. Okay. And one other uh, long-term complication of hysterectomy, which many people fear about, or they, which puts off from surgery, is the long-term consequence of having a hysterectomy. The his uterus is sitting on the pelvic floor and it's attached to all the pelvic muscles, the floor muscles. And the moment they remove the uterus, hap what happens is they develop a weakness of the pelvic wall, the floor. And what happens is later they can have problems like uh, prolapse. They can have prolapse of the bladder, they can have prolapse of the bladder or the rectum and they can have problems with this or they can have urinary incontinence as well. Sometimes they cough and they have, uh, they're passing urine and that happens accidentally because the pelvic floor is very weak and this happens very commonly after having a hysterectomy, not immediately, but after a few years. So if a woman has a hysterectomy at 40 and probably by 50, she is having this problem, she suffers with this until the end of her life, which is very significant problem to undergo. Undergo. So, what do we do at MIOT? So, at MIOT, we offer a pinhole procedure for this condition called fibroids without opening the body and without removing the uterus. So, here we have a schematic of what we do. So, when patients come to us with fibroid related heavy periods or pain or whatever reason, we will assess them. We do an ultrasound scan to confirm it. Most of the women already know the diagnosis because they've been putting up with this for a long time. So what we do is we admit them for a day. We do this procedure where we make a tiny nick in the groin in the top of the leg. This we do under uh, local anesthesia, which means we give a small injection in the groin to numb the area and then we put the tube inside. And then under x-ray guidance, we carefully pass this tube into the blood vessel which supplies the uterus. And this we can confirm by injecting a dye and what we, this is called an angiogram. Angiogram is just a common terminology for taking picture of blood vessels. Now, patient, when we mention the word angiogram, people generally identify with the heart because that's where it's commonly used. But angiogram is a general terminology for any picture of blood vessels. So we can take picture of the blood vessels of the uterus to confirm we are there in the right place because the pelvic organs, there are a lot of pelvic organs and there are a lot of blood vessels there. But we carefully identify the blood flow to the uterus and then we push a tiny catheter further close to the arteries which supplies the fibroids and then we inject tiny plastic beads and these plastic beads what they tend to do is go along with the blood flow and they block the tiny blood vessels which are supplying the fibroids generally when we have a fibroid in the uterus what happens we notice is compared to a normal uterus most of the blood is drawn by the sucked in by the fibroids because they want blood supply to grow survive and grow so any organ needs blood flow to survive and grow. And because these fibroids are slowly growing and they are much more active than normal uterine tissue, they tend to grow and draw much lower blood supply to them. So when we block the blood supply, what happens? We all know that all parts of the body needs blood flow to survive and grow. So the moment you block the blood flow to them, these fibroids die and they shrink in size. And what is the result for the patient? For the patient from the next period they go on, the cycles are much lighter and they're period pain goes away and all the symptoms related to the pressure symptoms slowly get better because these fibroids, once they die, the body tends to remove the dead tissue. That's the function of the normal function of the body. Anywhere there's dead tissue or dead cells, the body will remove it. So the body will remove the dead cells and these fibroids shrink in size and patient gets relief from the symptoms. And this, I want to reiterate that this procedure only affects the blood flow to the fibroids. The rest of the normal healthy uterus remains as it is without being touched. So that's why this is also a very good treatment for women who are having infertility issues due to the fibroid. Now, women may have infertility issues due to a lot of reasons, but if it's mainly due to fibroids, this can be a good treatment because the normal uterus is untouched without any scar and they can go on to, go on to have a normal pregnancy. So I'm going to show you a small uh, animation cartoon of how this uh, procedure works. As you can see, the fibroid is shown in yellow color, which is sitting in the uterus there. And then from a tiny pinhole axis in the groin, we are advancing this yellow catheter and the catheter goes all the way into the uterine artery and these plastic beads are being released, which blocking the blood flow to the fibroid. And over time, 
these fibroids are shrinking in size, get smaller, and then a patient gets relieved from the symptoms. And the fibroids, what happens is, they sometimes ask me what happens to the fibroids. The fibroids stay inside, but they shrink in size and they become like a scar. They don't cause any more problems and they don't tend to grow back because once a blood supply is cut off to something, it just dies. So there's no chance of it coming back. So just to give you an overview of how uh, immediate post-op pictures will look in a patient who had uh, a hysterectomy, open hysterectomy, which is like a long scar in the abdomen here. And some people can have laparoscopic hysterectomy where they put keyholes and remove the fibroid. But this can be done only in patients who have very small fibroids. If they have a very huge fibroid, like six or eight centimeter fibroid, this procedure won't work because they are also operating through a keyhole. And it's simply not possible to remove the entire big uterus with, uh, with using the keyhole. So they have to do an open surgery. But very small fibroids, they can remove through a hysterectomy scar. But still, nevertheless, you still have a few scars, like one inch scars here, here, at least three scars you will have in the abdomen. But you compare to a patient who went uterine artery embolization done a day ago, you only see is like a tiny scratch, like a mosquito bite. And one week later, you can't even identify the scar. That's the uh, benefit of uterine artery embolization where you can do the surgery through a tiny pinhole and you don't end up with any scar whatsoever. So what are the advantages of doing this procedure? We already talked about a few. So it's a pinhole procedure and we don't leave any scar in the abdomen. Most important for many women, we preserve the uterus, we preserve their fertility. They don't feel like they have lost their uh, femininity because of this problem. And because once you lose uterus, you hit menopause immediately, right? So they, they, because you're 40 and you may be going on for another five years with your, your periods, but the moment you remove your uterus, you just hit menopause straight away. And because we do the procedure through a very tiny pinhole, there is no need for general anesthesia. Uh, that's a different topic. Anesthesia itself, general anesthesia itself carries risks, uh, major risks. And that's why, you know, some patients who have other medical problems may not be fit for general anesthesia. But in our procedure, we do it under just local anesthesia, just like the dentist. So there's no uh, need for general anesthesia. And because our procedure is very short uh, and uh, very minimally invasive, we send the patients home within three days after the procedure. So just after three days, they go home. And after five days after the procedure, they are back to the normal life. Yes, you heard it, just five days. After five days, they go back to the normal life. There's no restrictions on, uh, on, on showering or lifting heavy weights or anything. They just can go back to the normal life. And needless to say, because there's no major cut, no major uh, no disruption of the body structures, it's much, much safer than surgery. So I want to show you a, a few cases of patients who we treated at MIOT. So this is a lady, a 45-year-old businesswoman from Coimbatore. And her problem was she had heavy periods for the last two years. And it was so heavy that she would be passing clots and having dragging back, back pain. And this prevented her from going out of her house to work during a period's time. She would take off her work. And as a businesswoman, her work involved a lot of traveling, meeting a lot of uh, you know, potential customers and also this meant that at least one week of the month, she's out of her business. She can't run a business. So it's really affecting her life. And she went to many gynecologists in and around Coimbatore. And she was, the only suggestion was given to him, her was to have a uterus removed. But she was not keen on having a uterus removed. And actually, she told me that one of her gynecologists was, her, was a really close family friend. And she went and asked her gynecologist, Doctor, I read about this treatment called uterine artery embolization. Can I have it done? Will it work for me? And the gynecologist just told her, no, your uterus has got a very big fibroid and this won't work for you because that fibroid will not be, uh, you know, it cannot be treated because it's so huge, which is wrong. So she, despite that, uh, actually she had gone on to book her, you know, operation date with this gynecologist because she thought there's no other option. And this gynecologist is telling me that, no, this can't be treated by this embolization procedure. But uh, one last chance, after she booked a surgery date, she came, traveled to Chennai, met us at Miot, and, and showed us scans and everything. We told her, yes, we can treat this. This can be treated as well by, uh, you know, the uterine artery embolization. And she underwent the procedure and she had a period exactly two weeks after the procedure. So she was, she called us from Paimathur and she was very elated that her periods had gone down to really literally 20% of what it used to be. And it only lasted three days compared to the seven days it used to last. So she was very, very elated that she can, go back and do all the normal activity without any restrictions 
just due to these fibroids. And we have a scans here just to show you guys. So this is her scan, MRI scan, which is done before treatment. And you can see the large fibroids sitting in a uterus. And she also had uh, symptoms due to uh, pressure symptoms on her bladder. She had she can't hold her urine for a long time, and she also had uh, bloating in her abdomen. Also, she had felt a bulge in her lower abdomen getting bigger and bigger, and she just thought she was getting fat. She didn't realize it's the fibroid pushing in front causing all these problems. And this is her scan six months after treatment. You can see the fibroid has shrunk in size significantly. Also, to note that there is a slight difference in shade of gray. You see the fibroid after treatment looks a darker gray. And here it looks like a lighter gray. All that means to you guys is this type fibroid is dead. It's completely dead and it's slowly shrinking in size. I guess if we do a scan for her now, that will be even more smaller. So basically we cut off the blood supply to the fibroid without opening it up and that kills the fibroid and the fibroid completely shrinks in size and they have problem with periods, pain or periods, uh, heavy periods. That gets relieved immediately after surgery and she could even notice her bulge in the lower abdomen getting smaller. Actually, you can see in this picture, you can see the, the, the front of the picture, the skin, there's a lot of, there's a little bit of a bulge pushing forward, but here you'd see the line is straight and it's like flat. And she was happy that, you know, her tummy was also getting smaller because of this treatment. Next, I want to share with you uh, a history of an interesting patient. She is a 44 year old IT professional working in Chennai. She, more than an IT professional, She's a very avid fitness enthusiast. She regularly does jogging, cycling, and even weight training. And she rides cycle for almost 100 kilometers on the weekends. She does 100, 100 kilometers of cycling every weekend. And she noticed that she is having a lot of pain in her lower abdomen, the bulge. And then she was noticing that when she goes on cycling with a group, she has a group of people, women and men who go cycling along with her. She noticed that she had to take frequent toilet breaks compared to all her female colleagues who came along with her. And she also noticed she having this uh, lower abdominal pain and back pain. And she went and gets got scanned and she found out that she had fibroids. And again, she had very big fibroids, which would explain all her symptoms. She didn't have heavy periods, but her problem was back pain and uh, urinary frequency. And, uh, you know, it can present in different ways. So her problem was that. And then she again went to the gynecologist. She visited gynecologists in three different hospitals in Chennai. And all of them told her unanimously, you go for hysterectomy to have your uterus removed. But this lady being an IT professional, she had done all her research on the internet about what are the, what are the possible treatment options are. And she came to her treatment. She clearly told us, I don't want to have a hysterectomy. I don't want to lose my uterus. And she also knew about the uh, side effects, long-term side effects of pelvic flow weakness, which can happen after surgery, which can be very, very uh, you know limiting for her being a avid cyclist and a weight trainer. She didn't want to have any sort of that weakness in abdominal wall. And she was planning to, you know, go on a triathlon, which means she were to go, you know, cycling, jogging, running, and swimming. And she wanted to continue her swimming lessons. If she has a hysterectomy, she'll be off all this activity, training activity for a month, off work for a month. And also she'll be end up with a big wound and a scar, which means she can't go for swimming. So clearly she thought hysterectomy is not for me. And she came to us at Miot for treatment. And we successfully did the treatment for her. Third day, she went home. Fourth day, we called her to just to check because normally we send them home very early, right? Third day is very soon after procedure. So we called them on the fourth day to check. And she told, doctor, I've just come back from 10 kilometers of cycling and I'm fine. And all my friends are shocked because all of them are expecting to come and see me in the hospital. And actually, and they were shocked to see me joining them for the cycling trip. So that's the level of recovery you can get with this treatment because there's very minimally invasive, there's minimal disruption to your general body anatomy. There's no major disruption, so they can go and back to their fitness activities as soon as they can. And this is something you can't even imagine if you had a hysterectomy. Forget open hysterectomy. Even if you had a laparoscopic hysterectomy, still you advise not to lift heavy weights or do any fitness activity for one month. So this lady was back to cycling just four days after her fibroid embolization procedure. Just miraculous. So this red circle highlights the uterine fibroid here within the uterus. And... Here you can see the fibroid is almost shrunk in size and almost disappeared after her treatment. So just to summarize, at Miot, we provide a very, very simple, uncomplicated treatment for fibroids through a pinhole axis, which can 100% cure your fibroids without going through surgery or the side effects of surgery. And it's not just for uh, fibroids. We, as an interventional radiologist, we provide 
similar treatments for different parts of the body. I think it'll be very, you know, it'll be beyond the scope of this presentation to talk about all the treatments we do. But what's the message I would like to tell? One message I would like to tell is if you have a problem and your doctors advise you surgery, please consult interventional radiologists. See is an option to treat that condition by interventional uh, radiology methods, which means a pinhole method. And uh, obviously for fibroids, uh, it's a very good treatment. A lot of we, the whole reason of doing this uh, webinar was to create awareness among women because we know that a lot of women, because all the women we get in our clinic say that they've been putting up with this problem and suffering with this problem for so long just because they don't want a hysterectomy and they want to have an alternate solution. So we really, uh, and this turned out to be a boon for these people. The 42-year-old teacher was literally in tears when she had the treatment and she felt like she had gone back 10 years in life and she was back to jogging and everything, which she couldn't imagine because she was not even going out of her house for you know two, two weeks in a month. And uh, suddenly she felt she got a life back after this procedure. So it can be a life-changing treatment without any disturbances to your normal lifestyle. And uh, we are running a, a fibroid, special fibroid, dedicated fibroid clinic at Mayotte Hospitals from today, from 19th until 24th, where you can, patients, a lot of people who have fibroids or they think they may have fibroids can come to us for consultation and a basic screening package at a discounted rate so they can benefit from this treatment. And that's, that's all my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, doctor, for elaborating on this uh, non-surgical uh, treatment for uh, fibroids. Uh, we will now move on to the question and answer session. Uh, uh, how long does embolization procedure take and how long does the hospital stay? Does it require on average? Thank you, Serena, for your question. That, that's a very common question uh, women ask us. So, um, so the procedure la approximately lasts at least half an hour. Sorry, half an hour. No. One hour, the procedure lasts roughly one hour from the time we start the procedure to end the procedure. And then back to that day, stay on the ward for three days. After third day, we discharge them home and they, uh, um, and they go, go back to home on the third day. What to expect after the procedure, uh, they will have some mild crampy pain like what they have during the periods after the procedure because the fibroid has just been knocked off his blood supply. So that will be a bit of uh, inflammation there. So they'll have some cramping pain, but nothing like major like post-surgery. All we do is send them home with painkillers to take, simple painkillers to take, and that's enough to take care of the pain. And after the fifth day, they are really the pain all disappears and they're back to the normal life. So there are a couple of queries from viewers on what happens to the beads post-surgery. Okay. These beads are medically sterile inert beads, as in they don't cause any harm to the body. So these have been uh, researched. So they stay permanently inside the body inside the blood vessels of the fibroid. So they're not even floating around your body. They have gone and lodged into the tiny blood because these are like, we're talking about beads and microns. They're like 300 microns in size, which is very, very small. So these beads go and lodge inside the blood vessels of the fibroid. So they stay permanently there, block the blood supply and stay there. They don't come out, but they don't cause any harm because they are very safe, medically safe. Uh, a viewer wants to know he, uh, he or she has a relative with uh, fibroid. If she gets treated through this procedure, what are the chances of conceiving in future? Okay, there has been a scientific study uh, on women who had fibroids and having infertility issues primarily due to the fibroid. And they've done studies and shown that 30% of them went on to conceive naturally six months after treatment, within six months of treatment. So as I said earlier, the infertility could be due to a lot of issues you know, a lot of factors, not just only the fibroid, but if it's only due to the fibroids, yes, the fibroids shrink in size and the uterus, healthy uterus is left untouched so they can go on to have normal conception if the only problem is the fibroid causing their, uh, stopping them from having a baby. Um, would the patient have pain during recovery? Uh, there is a mild, yes, mild cramping pain. Just, they would normally tell me it's the same pain they get during the period but not as severe, they get this cramping pain after the procedure, just because we have knocked off the blood supply to the fibroids, there will be some cramping pain, but nothing unmanageable like surgical pain or a big wound pain. It's just like a cramping pain, what they go during the periods. And that is easily settled or resolved with painkillers. And that's the reason we send them, you know, first day or second day, it can be bad. So we keep them in hospital. Third day, we discharge them with painkillers. And in UK, when I used to work, we used to discharge them the next day 
but in india we tend to tend to keep them for 2 3 days because you know they have pain and a lot of times what happens is a lot of doctors when they go out to general practitioners they don't know what's happened because they don't know about fibroid implantation so they wouldn't know how to handle this so that's the reason we keep them in for 2 3 days make sure they're all okay the pain is almost gone and then send them home yeah so if you can reiterate a few points on the side effects of the conventional procedures sir as you discussed earlier so conventional surgery is a major open surgery which involves general anesthesia general anesthesia as such has risks you know they can help chest infection all these things and general anesthesia may not be suitable for some people who have chronic ailments like diabetes and blood pressure or heart problems this doesn't uh, fit into this group because these are patients who are relatively young so that's not a major issue coming to surgery during the surgery there are risks of blood loss because during surgery a blood vessel in the pelvis can get damaged when they are trying to remove the uterus or there can be damage to the organs next to the uterus the bladder urinary bladder sits very close to the uterus in front of it the ureters the tube which carry the urine from the kidney to the bladder also runs close to the uterus and then there is uh, the bowel right behind the uterus so that is risk of damage to these structures during the procedure and immediately after procedure they have a long big scar in the abdomen which means they have lots of pain obviously they've cut open the abdomen there and stitches are put in so there is risk of pain lots of pain requiring long strong painkillers and to stay in in icu for at least 2 to 3 days until the pain is better and then uh, post operatively it's going to take some time for them to start walking because they have a big wound in the lower abdomen and they generally told them told not to uh, no shower because the wound cannot get wet and uh, they can't lift heavy weights and uh, the recovery phase as i told you they have to be in hospital for at least a week and then for them to get back to their full activity where they were before the surgery it usually takes one to two months depending on the size of the fibroid and all these things and uh, long term uh, there is a risk of having pelvic floor weakness because uh, uh, the when the fibroid is being removed the pelvic floor gets the strength gets weakened and over time they are generally told not to lift heavy weights after having hysterectomy a lot of women come and tell me i've heard all stories they tell me no i don't want to have hysterectomy because i've heard stories from other women who had hysterectomies and having problems with this pelvic floor weakness what it means is they can have urinary incontinence when they cough they leak urine that's very embarrassing for them so they can have pelvic floor weakness they can have or they can have prolapse which means a bladder can slip down and or the rectum can slip down um beyond the anus and all this thing so they can have long term complications like that yeah these are the drawbacks of surgery yes Uh, so the, there are a couple of questions on the size of the fibroids. So someone wants to know if this can be done for a fibroid of eighty uh, centimeters in size. Eighteen centimeters. Eighteen centimeters. Yes, the biggest fibroid we've treated is yeah, the size is of around eighteen to twenty centimeters. The only criteria for size does not matter for us. We can treat fibroids, much big fibroids as well. It also depends on on a patient to patient basis. Okay, so we always do a MRI scan before we do this treatment to see the main criteria for us is to know whether the fibroid is alive or dead. Because what happens in the natural course is the fibroids tend to grow, get bigger, and over time they may die. They become inactive, which means there is no blood flow to them. If there is no blood flow to them, then we can't treat them because you know we work by blocking the blood flow to the fibroids. The fibroids have become dead or inactive, then our treatment doesn't work. but most of the patients they are young patients all these patients have active fibroids which we can treat we are talking about a very small proportion of patients size is not a criteria size is only matters if the patient's got a 20 cm fibroid but she wants to conceive you know when we do this treatment the fibroids will shrink to literally half or one third of its size but 20 cm means it will probably come down to 6 cm which still may be a hindrance for pregnancy so in a young woman who wants to conceive and has a 20 cm fibroid which is very hard in rare cases then we will suggest them to go for surgery but if she is a 45 year old woman who is almost reaching menopause she's had a children and she wants to have this treatment just to treat the period pain period symptoms or the bulge yes this treatment will work so size is not the criteria the criteria is whether the uterus is the fibroid is active or dead that we will do test to work out before we do the treatment yeah so a viewer wants to know that uh, i've already undergone laparoscopic procedure to remove two fibroids and i have three more left so can an embolization be done now absolutely yes again we will what we do is we will do a mri scan to work out size and location of these fibroids 
and they are active again as i mentioned they have blood flow we can go and treat them and the advantage with this treatment is when we do release these particles they will go to wherever there are active fibroids meaning if she now she knows she has three fibroids left behind she may have one or two tiny ones which are not seen on scans which may be starting to grow now and so when we treat with fiber embolization all these fibroids get treated so yes it can work for her yes can ovarian cyst of 11 cm be also treated with our surgery uh, ovarian cyst there are a lot of reasons women have ovarian cyst we need to work out the nature of the cyst first and uh, this is not related to fibroid but she has ovarian cyst if it's a simple cyst yes we can put a directly put a small needle and take out the fluid from the cyst and shrink in size that can be done but if it's due to other reasons we need to do a scan to work out what the nature of the cyst before we can offer any treatment via interventional radiology this is not we do what we do with blood flow this is something a different treatment but we need to consult her see her see her test what she has done and do more tests to see what's the nature of the lump before we can advise her yes there are two viewers who want to know if a malignancy can also be found out is there a chance of getting a biopsy report done for in this procedure right we we can do a biopsy if you guys want to do a biopsy but what we normally do is we do an ultrasound scan and we'll do an mri scan before we do this treatment because this treatment is not meant for cancerous uh, growths in the uterus this is mainly meant for fibroids the non cancerous growths as i mentioned the one of the reason we do the mri scan is for to make sure this lump is just a fibroid because if the mri scan shows something different like a cancer we will tell them no you go for surgery this is not the treatment for you that's one of the reasons we do the uh, mri scan as well so the mri scan shows any doubts then we will do a biopsy and refer them for surgical removal because that uterus needs to come out but when the mri scan shows it's clearly a fibroid and there's no suspicious features then we offer this treatment thanks for bringing up this question because that tells about the cancerous ones so, but this treatment is not for cancers here yeah. so the number of uh, queries on uh, is there's a possibility of fibroid growing after the procedure so again uh, this uh, when we treat these fibroids with uh, particles these particles go to wherever there is active rich blood supply so as i mentioned about the earlier case there she has two three fibroids it will go to all the two three fibroids because these fibroids will generally tend to suck up the blood flow so the particles are going along with the blood flow just like the you know something leaf going in a river so they will go towards the fibroids so even if they have two three tiny fibroids which are not seeing now to the naked eye on the scan but they will also get treated when you do this treatment and once these fibroids are treated they permanently the blood flow is blocked with these particles and their particles stay inside so these fibroids usually die and there's very small chance of very very uh, no chance of these fibroids which are already there coming back but in future after the treatment after a year she does start growing another fibroid is possible yes but the whatever we treat is treated completely treated yes so in general what kind of apprehensions do patients have when they come in for a uh, embolization what questions do they ask you yeah so i think i think we went through most of the questions they normally ask because this is a fairly new procedure well this procedure has been around for nearly since the 80s 1980s and, and it's very common in abroad and in india it's not very common because lack of awareness and so we when they come to us for uh, inquiry we consultation we tell them explain them about the procedure we tell them about the risks the risks are very minimal very very safe procedure and uh, they do ask us about the same questions whether the fibroid will you know grow back or uh, and or there's any risk of damage to any of the structures and uh, those are the main questions as they ask, ask us what will happen to my periods after the fibroid we tell them that your periods will happen as normal as they do regular cycles but only thing you'll notice your periods will be much lighter because that's the problem they come with in the first place so those are the questions they mainly ask and they ask whether they can have a normal conception after this treatment we say yes they can have um so there's a question from a viewer sir i'm having a fibroid with size of 7.4 into 7.5 is it possible or safe to uh, get i mean remove the fibroid without a uh, hysterectomy yes so in consult the patient we'll do a ultrasound scan mri scan to work out if it's very active fibroid just like we mentioned if it is then we can do treatment because most of the patients we get have fibroids which are like around 7 to 8 cm the IT lady we talked about she had multiple fibroids almost of the size five to eight centimeters. No, we just showed one, but they have yes. The short answer is yes. Is this cover and covered under insurance? Yes, it is covered under insurance. Most of our patients have it done under insurance. 
so one viewer wants to know like how many menstrual cycles will it take for her to see the changes post procedure usually the first cycle after her treatment they will notice changes they will notice significant improvement so there are a couple of viewers who want to know other than uterine uh, uh, fibroids can i pose a question sure please yes so is there any interventional radiological procedure for hemorrhoids hemorrhoids there is a new yeah. treatment for hemorrhoids where we block the blood flow to the hemorrhoids as well that's a fairly new treatment so interventional radiology is a very very uh, you know uh, recently advancing rapidly expanding so they are expanding the indications where we do treatments for yes for hemorrhoids as well that is a treatment where we because hemorrhoids again is bulging blood vessels in the in the anal area which causes you know bleeding during their uh, in the past motion so yes there is a treatment available but we need to carefully consult them evaluate them before we offer the treatment yes and uh, just to mention if patients are interested other people viewers are interested to know what are the treatments we offer uh, there is actually like a list of more than 50 or 60 treatments we offer for different conditions it's listed on our miod website under the tab interventional radiology we've listed all the treatments we offer for uh, under interventional radiology for variety of conditions and uh, and patient viewers can and please click, click on the link and uh, look at it for themselves and then can always uh, send an email to us if they have any queries regarding that so another related one my sister has nodules in her thyroid and was yeah. suggested to remove the thyroid so can a similar treatment be performed for thyroid nodules yes yes we recently actually hindu was also there so we did a recent we do a treatment called uh, radio frequency ablation for thyroid nodules and which is a pinhole again a pinhole treatment where we just insert a small needle into the thyroid gland just like the way we should have had a fine needle aspiration change just like that we'll insert a small needle needle tip produces heat which can actually burn the nodules and kill them and the nodules shrink in size this treatment is very very effective and patients don't need to have a thyroidectomy because they are young they don't need to have the thyroid removed and this treatment can be very effective for them yes the answer is yes for them and they can come and consult us if they want to have the treatment then what is the actual fibroid size for treating in medically and can you explain about a urinary incontinence in relevance with fibroids so the first question was medically on medical treatment yeah medical yeah. medical management of uh, fibroids okay. so what size medical management of fibroids is not dependent on the size it depends on the patient's age you know their bad they are in their uh, reproductive cycle whether they had Uh, they had completed the family and all the things it's based on that they do this treatment and medical treatment usually is hormone based treatment because we know that the fibroids grow because of the hormonal imbalance the excessive hormones which make them grow so what the gynecologists or physicians give is hormone tablets like oral contraceptive pills basically to block the hormones so the fibroids temporarily uh, you know shrink in size and they also stop they don't have these heavy periods but it's not a permanent solution for this problem but it can be for some women who are like almost hitting menopause if they are 45 or 46 and they're almost close to menopause then the hormonal treatment will work because it works for 3 to 6 months and maybe by another 6 months they may hit menopause and the problem will get better because after menopause we know that the hormones come down naturally body stops producing hormones and the fibroids will tend to shrink in size as well so we know that thing for fact that fibroids grow only during the active phase of the reproductive cycle as in between 30 to 45 50 years it grows after that it starts shrinking in size because the hormones are the ones driving that growth so it may work for some patients not for many so it all based on a patient to base patient basis and uh, urinary incontinence we talked about um, so as i mentioned the pelvis is a very small crowded space the lower abdomen we talking about within the bony pelvis and all of us know and there the bladder sits in the front in the middle is the uterus and behind is the bowel so it's a very small cram space it's just snugly fits everything woman the fibroid starts growing the fibroid tends to bend forward and press on top of the bladder so when it touches it presses on the bladder what happens is the bladder gets irritated and there's pressure on the bladder we all get pressure or sensation to pass urine when the bladder gets full and stretched right so the normal capacity of bladder is 400 ml roughly around 300 to 400 ml so when it reaches that size you feel a sensation or urge to pass urine and you go and pass urine but what happens these patients is because the fibroid is also applying pressure and compressing the bladder moment you have 100 or 200 ml of urine you feel that you want to pass urine so you feel the urge to pass urine and then you can't hold for long you moment you feel the urge you have to rush to the toilet so it's not urinary incontinence it's something called urinary urgency if they feel urgent they have to pass urine and they end up going to the toilet much more frequently than 
normal people do because there is uh, you know they can't the bladder capacity is constrained the incontinence happens after they do surgery if they have a hysterectomy done that's when what happens when they remove the uterus the uterus is interconnected very closely to the pelvic floor muscles so the moment they take out the uterus that pelvic floor gets weakened and the pelvic floor also plays a very important role in maintaining continence because normally when we we don't realize when we cough and all we contract the pelvic muscles by you know not intentionally we involuntarily we contract the muscles to hold this sphincters in place sphincters are something like uh, constrictors which close the mouth of the urinary bladder and the anus so these hold these in place so you stay continent but when they have a pelvic floor weakness that when you cough the pressure the body the pelvic floor is not strong enough to take the pressure so they start leaking a little bit of urine whenever they cough and this happens very commonly in uh, women like getting older the weak vessels can the, the muscles can get weak but when you remove the uterus they get even weaker they can have all this problems there is another question related to the thyroid nodules yeah. some nodules are supposed to be bending why should they be removed okay um a uh, very good question so the guidelines medical guidelines say that in at least in india the thyroid guidelines say that if the thyroid nodule is more than 3 cm in size it needs to be removed because there is a small chance if you left it like that they grow bigger and they can turn into cancer the chance is very small but generally because there is a chance in future they tend to remove the half the thyroid gland or the whole thyroid gland depending on where the nodule is <clears throat> if they have nodules on both sides of the thyroid gland then they will remove the whole thyroid gland but again i don't recommend this treatment but i'm telling you this is what happens that's why the the doctors tell you to remove the thyroid gland and we also do a something called fine needle aspiration we put a small needle and take a sample from the gland or the nodule itself to see whether it's a benign nodule or a malignant nodule malignant nodule there's no questions asked you have to have it removed benign nodules yes we can this now we have an option called radio frequency ablation where just through a without anesthesia just in a local anesthesia we can put a small needle half an hour you can heat the nodule and shrink it in size yeah so uh, that's the reason that the question was why they have to remove the reason they have to remove is there's a very very small chance uh, depending on different nodules have different rates of conversion to cancer there is a small chance they can convert to cancer that's why they advise that beyond 3 cm size it better remove the nodule but they can't remove the nodule on its own so they remove half the thyroid along with it that's what the surgeon do yeah can a similar procedure be done for prostate enlargement yes we do a procedure called prostate artery embolization is exactly similar like what we told for uterine arteries a lot of men have older men have the prostate gland swollen prostate gland which compresses under urinary uh, you know urinary tract and they can't pass urine freely or they have again have problems with passing going to urine very freely or they have a weak stream passing urine or some patients even end up with a catheter because they can't pass urine because the urinary pathway is compressed we again go into the blood flow of the uh, prostate gland and we inject tiny particles again just like the fibroids to block the blood flow to it the prostate gland shrinks in size and releases the pressure on the urinary pathway so you can pass urine yes this treatment can be done for prostate artery as well prostate enlargement as well but again we need to make sure that it's a benign enlargement so we will evaluate them with scans to make sure it's uh, not a cancer and only a benign enlargement of the prostate in those cases this treatment works very well without surgery yes we'll take a couple of questions more sir sure uh, can fibroids turn cancerous okay fibroids per se are benign and very 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 rarely they turn cancerous nothing is 100% in medical field so there is a small chance one cell can flip over and turn into a cancer but the chances are very very less uh, yeah the viewer i'm having a cyst of 11 cm in size and fibroid of 7 cm However, currently leading a healthy life with the running and diet control, hence having normal periods without any pain. Still, uh, do I need to go for any treatment or surgery? There is no discomfort as such. Okay. So uh, as we as we also mentioned in the presentation, a lot of women have fibroids. Almost one in two women have fibroids. Not everybody requires treatment. As long as the fibroid is not causing them any symptoms, we can leave them alone. Regarding a cyst, she has to go and evaluate. what sort of cyst is it she has a ovarian cyst you mentioned so you have to go and evaluate and make sure that is safe then she can probably sit on it also because not have any treatment for it and just keep it under observation with a doctor because uh, you know things can grow bigger and all these things so uh, and advice obviously the sensible advice is to have a healthy lifestyle healthy uh, working lifestyle healthy diet and just just uh, don't have to have any treatments yes for now so a couple of them want to know should any food should be avoided in the case of fibroids 
no with interventional radiology treatments there are nothing like no restrictions on food or activity after 3 to 4 days of treatment just holds good for most of the interventional treatment that's the advantage of interventional radiology because we do pinhole procedures there's no uh, restrictions on food some patients who go on blood thinners some patients who have you know blockages in the blood vessels in the leg we open up the blood vessels to heal the ulcers some people have diabetics have uh, wounds in the leg where we uh, treat the open up the blood vessels and put them on blood thinners they have dietary restrictions but as long as we don't put them any treatments there's no dietary restriction So within how many days can I go to work post this pinhole uh, procedure? They can definitely go. We advise them five days. They are back to the normal activity. We advise them uh, a week. Basically, like you do the treatment, you do a treatment on Monday, Wednesday or Thursday, you get discharged. Maybe another three four days after that, maybe by middle of next week, they can go to work. Can we have your concluding remarks, sir? Yes, definitely. Uh, Thank, thanks all the viewers for the uh, nice questions and thanks for listening to our presentation. I hope you all enjoyed and uh, got a lot of useful information from this presentation. So, just the closing remark is: we are running a, a fibroid clinic, and since there are a lot of viewers having uh, fibroids, asking questions whether this treatment would work for them, we kindly request them to uh, come to our clinic and uh, make avail of this opportunity to get uh, consultation and treatment, possibly at a discounted rate, because I think the hospital is. Uh, to create create the awareness they even the treatments they're planning to offer a discount for the treatment as well the actual fibroid embolism treatment as well so i kindly encourage all the uh, listeners to inform their friends and colleagues and whoever has issues with his fibroid related symptoms to come and consult us at the clinic and uh, and last comment is about interventional radiology as well it's a very uh, there's a lot of minimal very few very little awareness about interventional radiology as i just as i told you if you have any medical problem or a surgical problem where the surgeon says you need to have surgery just like a thyroid please consult an interventional radiologist to see if they can offer anything without surgery which is true in most cases i can't tell you every case surgery still has a role but there are many cases where you can get away without surgery especially young people or even older people uh, they can have it so please refer to myod web we have a list of all the procedures we offer for different conditions for different organ systems uh, that will tell you what procedures we can offer or you can consult an interventional radiologist for further information yes. thank you thank thank you doctor so that brings us to the end of this webinar i thank dr kartikeyan for elaborating on the non surgical procedure for treating fibroids i thank all the viewers and i hope the session was beneficial thank you all thank you